Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Life of Brian. Hope everyone's having a great day. I'm in my 2008 uh, Audi R8, and I'm gonna go take it for a wash and run a few quick errands, but I wanted to do a quick video on this car and just kind of discuss a few things I like about it, just some initial impressions. Um, you know, obviously there's tons and tons and tons of video and uh, material about this car already. Um, you know, it's the halo car of all halo cars. It's really what kind of skyrocketed the Audi brand uh, when this car was introduced in 2006. It was affordable, it was a supercar. It was kind of like every man day supercar. It had the beautiful gated shifter, um, uh, you know, fantastic V8. The looks, you know, the side blades, you know, it just looked like a spaceship going down this the street. Just it, it checked all the boxes, the price point, the looks, even the reliability, um, you know, the, the the build quality, everything, the stars aligned, and you had your first generation R8. Again, mine's the 2008, and since the first generation, obviously the R8s have gotten more powerful, um, more stuff. Um, I think uh, the last um, iteration in 2023, I think the V10s um, were putting out something like 560 to 600 horsepower, 604 horsepower, something like that. I think depending on, you know, special editions or whatever uh, race versions. Um, and of course, obviously they, they, uh, they eventually did away with the V8 version and they only had the V10. But, you know, I think the V8, um, it has a great sound uh it's it's plenty of power that you know this is this has uh, 420 horsepower which is nothing to sneeze at but again compared to the the later iterations and and modern supercars you know it, it definitely can't keep up in that regard but you know this is just a the first the first day i got this car i i remember i picked it up and i drove it back to my office and it was downpouring just completely downpouring um and the car felt fine, stable, wasn't sliding all over the place. I know it has the, the Quattro, um, you know, uh, this, every time actually I drive this car, it seems like it rains, but the reason I mentioned the rain thing is because this, I've never felt like I felt in my Gallardo, my, my Ferrari, my, my Ford GT, um, my McLaren, even when I'm driving those cars, especially in bad weather, I'm always like, fists are clenched super tight on the steering wheel i'm sweating beads of sweat are coming down because i'm like oh my god this thing's gonna break down or it's gonna you know slide off the road or just something's gonna go wrong especially in bad weather and this car is has been bulletproof absolutely bulletproof no issues no problems no gremlins no warning lights absolutely nothing i've changed the oil on this guys i've had this for about two years i've changed the oil and that's literally it um it's just against bulletproof 100% always reliable never had an issue good weather bad weather torrential downpours uh, doesn't doesn't phase it whatsoever um, and I own a Gallardo as well and I, and I believe that this and the Gallardo are on the same like platform um, and, and you can tell getting in the car you know there's obviously a lot of similarities um, but in terms of the driving experience, guys, it's completely different. When I drive my Gallardo, it, it feels, and I, and I like my Gallardo, it's just, it's obnoxious, it, it, it's the, the look of it, it's very dramatic and flamboyant, it makes a really great sound, um, you know, it's V10, but it's like driving a tank. Um, it's, it's literally like driving a tank, which, you know, when you're bumper to bumper traffic, when you're parking, when you're reversing, when you're getting into tight corners, it sucks. Um, and really, if you're like on a straightaway, like under the freeway, yeah, it's awesome. But in 85% of my daily driving, my Gallardo is a chore. It's burdensome. It sucks. This is completely different. And again, considering they're on, you know, they're, they're the same platform. Um, they, they're, they're completely different cars though. And I'm not just talking from a power standpoint, from a V8, V8 versus V10. The, the Gallardo is such, it's much more nimble easy to drive um the turning radius is it's night and day but just the, the mechanics of it the feel the um it, it, it you feel like you're driving a smaller car if that makes sense um you don't feel like you're driving you know like the gallardo like i said you feel like you're driving a super wide tank um 
and this one is just it's not cumbersome it's 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 easy to, to throw around if you will it's very nimble it's quick it's just a great 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 um, enthusiast's car um, and of course um, I'll do an interior shot an exterior shot as well but the, the, the gated shifter the clinks clink clinks um, I always wanted to have um, uh, a gated shifter and I tried to find one with my my Modena but I wasn't able to at the time um, so my Modena has the I think it's called the F1 transmission but um, this one is, although maybe not as good as a Ferrari or a Lamborghini gated shifter, it's, it's, it's really nice. I love the clinks. It's so satisfying to hear those things. Um, and, you know, driving the car is such a joy. And I'm sure you guys who have driven these, own these before. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But, you know, this is, this is the, every, the everyday man supercar, the working man supercar. Because, again, um, the price point, even when it came out, I think it was obviously uh, over the years it got more expensive, um, which was one of the knocks on it. Uh, and at some point it stopped becoming the every everyday man, the working man supercar. But when it first came out, the first generations were definitely that. And even obviously as a used car, you're getting even more bang on the buck. You're getting a fantastic car, looks like a supercar, um, drives like a supercar. You know, when people, when I go down the road and this thing, I still get thumbs up. I honestly think this car looks better than the later iterations. I think they got too too much stuff, too much stuff going on. They got too loud, too busy. These were very simple, uh, beautiful. Uh, I think these will and have, in fact, uh, aged incredibly well. Um, I think another 10, 20, 25, 50 years from now, people will look back at these first generation RAs and say, man, such a beautiful car, such, you know, um, well designed. The layout is great. Obviously, the, um, the, uh, the driving experience is fantastic as well. And it's just, yeah, it's just an incredible car. Um, going through actually the uh, the car wash right now, guys, you may be uh, leaving me a comment or a thumbs down, like, oh my God, you take your R8 through a uh, automated car wash? Yes, yes I do. Uh, I'm sure paint somehow, or you know, I've done a lot of research on this, guys. Uh, comment below, let, let me know. I've heard it um, both ways, quite honestly. Um, in terms of you know does it screw up the car does it leave you know Waiting swirl marks and all sorts of stuff but you know what hey it's a car um i, I run my nsx through um uh a car wash like this as well so you know what cars get dirty and they need to get washed so i'm gonna wash them let me actually just line up here so i don't completely just jack up my car one second Sorry guys, I was running the car through the car wash and the uh, very nice gentleman was helping me align the car so it would, you know, scrape up the rims. But anyways, um, yeah, the, the car is, um, I think it, it will go down as, as one of the, the, I think it's the the greatest Halo car of all time. I really, I really don't think that's, uh, there's much dispute about that. Um, and, you know, if, if every car, if every manufacturer did a halo car like um like audi did with the r8 you know i think you know they would that would be a complete game changer you know lexus is you constantly hear the comparison with the lfa with lexus and the lfa oh my god love that car i would love to have one of those one days but that's completely out of my price range or if i could even find one the lfa as 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 beautiful and as you know perhaps people say it's the best sounding engine ever um but they were so expensive um, when they came out and you couldn't even own them you could only lease them i think and they were i think like quarter million dollars 250 to 300 thousand dollars and of course they're much more now but there weren't you know the, most people can't afford that and uh, so you have this great car that no one can afford and no one no one can experience uh you only see in magazines and on commercials so yeah i mean it's a it's it's it, it's marketing the brand and showing what your you know your brand can do and what the company can do and the technology and engineering but if no one can experience it then you know they're not going to know how awesome it is right and so the r8 completely was a game changer in that regard people could actually experience how great this car is and you know once word got out and you know the iron man movie and all that kind of thing it was uh no looking back for for audi and it completely again changed the trajectory of that company uh, forever. So, yeah, I, I really, um, I love this car. It's, um, I don't drive it as much as I, I would like to, again, because I, I do have other cars that uh, I try to rotate in and out of, but 
in terms of being the everyday man supercar, the working man supercar, the R8 was that. It's no longer that, um, but when it first came out, it, 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 it you know certainly was. You know, right now, um, is there something that I would say is the everyday working man supercar? Um, you know, I'm trying to think. I mean, the R8's being retired, or it's been retired. Obviously, there's not really a um, a base Ferrari, or a, let me take it back. There's not a base, you know, supercar that uh, McLaren or Ferrari or um, uh, Lamborghini make. I think McLaren makes. Um, I don't know if you call it a base, but they're kind of entry level supercar. I forgot what it's called, but quite frankly, I think it looks like all their other supercars. Um, but I'm sure the price point on that is well above six figures. I, I think, you know, in, in this day and age, guys, I don't think I don't think you're ever going to find um, uh, a supercar that is going to be sub six figures. Now, a lot of people think the Corvette is 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 a supercar that could be classified as the everyday man, the working man supercar. Um, you know, I think I'm not going to lie. I've never been a Corvette guy. I've never been a Mustang guy. I've never been a Camaro guy. But every time I see the new um, the uh, the new Corvette, I think it's a C5. I'm not sure, C5 or C8. I'm completely making that up, probably C8. I think the C8 uh, coming down the road. I kind of do two or three looks. I, I I like the way they look. Not so much from the back, but from the front. I think they look good. Um, but I think once you get, you know, they have different packages, you know, different trims. Um, and, uh, I think very easily you can find yourself and most likely do typically find yourself right around that six figure mark and above. I think the base C8 Corvette that you could get, which I don't even know if they make those or if you can find those. I think, you know, they start technically around 70 or something. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, around 70,000. Um, but again, can you even find them or do they even make them? Um, but I think that would probably be the closest thing to the everyday man or working man supercar. And again, the argument would be, is that actually a supercar? It's a Corvette. Um, I think a lot of people would say Corvettes are not supercars. Um, they just, you know, they just aren't. But, you know, the, the C8 definitely is doing a good job of trying to change that, that narrative. So I think, you know, Lotus, in terms of price point, again, those are all at or above six figures the amira i'm uh, pretty sure right at six figures so again a sub six figure supercar guys I, i'm just not aware of any that exists let me know in the comments below if you can think of something that i'm forgetting but yeah this is something where i think it was kind of just like the stars aligned perfectly for this car um you know price point looks uh reliability it was just it was the right time the right place for this car to come out and amazingly you know even though you know you know, people, a lot of people say, oh, you know, the Audis or, you know, they're just rebadged or detuned Lambos, you know. The fact that this RA got so much love and still got got a lot of love, uh, even in the subsequent generations as, you know, the Lamborghinis um, were there, which people could say, oh, it's the same thing, whatever, just get the Lambos more power. And especially once the R8s uh, got more expensive and then people were like, well, why am I paying this much for an R8? I might as well just get the Lambo because at least I get the badge and the you know, the attention that I'm really seeking. Um, the fact that these first generation R8s still get a lot of love, um, you know, collectors still go after them. Um, you know, I think that says a lot about this car, just like the first generation, uh, my first generation, gener first generation NSX. I think these cars will, will definitely, um, you know, as time goes by, uh, people will appreciate them even, even, uh, even more because you don't always need the most horsepower and the most this or that. Um, uh, the most power v10 v12 that to to you know have a enduring legacy and this car certainly has that so just want to share with you guys my uh initial impressions of my audi r8 i uh, hope you guys like the video let me know what you guys think do you have one um have you driven one what are your thoughts pros and cons um i'll make a more in-depth video later on uh, maybe a five things i like five things i dislike but um yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, just suggest any other content you'd like to see. I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to, guys, uh, hope to see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.